All right, there we go. So today, we're talking about a question that can almost feel tricky, about something that we're like, you know, when you really think about it, prayer doesn't make sense. Let me tell you what I'm thinking. Maybe some of you have had this thought before. Maybe other people that you've talked to have had this concern or this question. If God is real, if he's so powerful, why does he ask us to pray? Why would he? Because if he's all-powerful, he's all-knowing, why would he... Um, let me say it this way. Why would he wait for us to pray? He's a sovereign, good God. God knows everything. There's verses even that he says that God knows what we need before we ask him. So why pray? God is all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He is everywhere. He's sovereign. So why isn't it just set up so that God does what he wants to do, and if he wants to involve us, then he will. And if he doesn't want to involve us, then he won't. That's how some people think. That's actually how some people even teach. That's not what the Bible says. No, if that was true, why would we ever pray? If God is sovereignly going to do things on his own, and we don't really have a say in it, then why pray? Put in the comments. I want to see. Put it in the comments right now for those of you watching. How would you answer that? If God's sovereign, he's all-powerful, he's all-knowing, he's everywhere, he knows the beginning from the end, why would we pray? Isn't God just going to do what he wants to do and then we have to fill in the rest on our own? I know a whole lot of people live in that way. And that's not how it is. All right, anybody ready? You're like, all right, just give me the answer. This is ridiculous. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> well, here's what it is. If that was how it would, was set up, he never would ask us to pray. Yet you can go all through the word and see all the different times where he invites us to pray. The Lord's Prayer. Jesus says, now pray like this, right? Follow this pattern. You see all through, he's like, when you pray, believe that you have received and it will be done for you, right? We have, there's verses, uh, let us then with, like Hebrews 4, 16, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find help or find grace to help in time of need. Wait, it looks like right there that although that he's an all-powerful, all-knowing God, when we draw near to the throne of grace with confidence, like it says in Hebrews 4.16, then he will give us the mercy and the grace that we need or to help in a time of need. It's so important. The Bible, I won't go over it again. It is all through the word how important prayer is. But why? Is God so weak that he can't answer prayer or can't do anything in this world unless his people pray? Are, are we the master and he's the slave? No, <laughs> that's definitely not it. But some people think that way. They teach that way. They go the far opposite. Well, if God saw, God's sovereign, he's all-powerful, he'll do what he wants, and we'll just have to figure out the rest on ourselves. Not right. God is my um, genie in a bottle, and I will just ask for what I want, and he has to give it to me, especially if I come confidently. That's all I need. And then he gets me everything I need, everything I want, everything I pray about. Still wrong. What is prayer? Why do we pray? Let me tell you. It's simple. It's You can find a clue 
in Hebrews 11, 6. So when you're like, wait, that's how, wait, that does, that's not about prayer. It is. Let me, let me show you. Hebrews 11, 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please him, because it's talking about God there, please God, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. God rewards those who seek him. He loves to talk to God. That is, yeah, that's why we pray. He loves to reward those who seek him. How can he reward us? What's this all about? It's about relationship. That's what prayer is about. It's not about, you know, God's my ma or God's my my genie in a bottle and I'm going to be the master and I'm going to ask for all the things that I need and he's got to give it to me. That's not how it works. God's sovereign and God will do what he wants to do and we just got to figure out everything else on our own because God's only going to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. So you just got to leave it up. No, that's not it. What's it about? Prayer is about connection to the Father. That he is so good and he wants to have a deeper relationship with us to the point where he even rewards us when we seek him. How would he reward us? Through prayer. God, I love connecting to you. Do the, the, I, I send out, no, I didn't. I am about to send out an email uh, with the six steps of how to develop a relationship with God. If you're not on our mailing list, get on it tonight. Join at rootbible.com. And that'll get you, when you sign up there, then you get added into the mailing list. As long as you check that box that, yes, I want to receive uh, contact from Root Bible. And you will get the, it's the six steps to hanging out with God or developing a, a thriving relationship with him. So that's going to come out tomorrow morning. So if you want to get that, do it. But what do we do? It's about connection. It's about thanking him, developing that relationship. That's what prayer is all about. And when we do, he loves to reward us. He loves to bless us with the things that we ask of him when we ask according to his will. What's it say? That if we ask according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the things we ask of him. Why? Because he rewards those who seek him. Now, if we're seeking the thing, are we going to get rewarded? No, probably not. I know a lot of people that go to God not seeking relationship and just seeking things, just seeking desires, just seeking needs. And it always feels like they've come up short. That the things that they're praying for aren't fully met the way that they need them to. And so then they, they do more focus on their needs, more focus on their wants, more attention to the things that they desire. When the whole time God's up there, he's got the cattle on a thousand hills. He's got everything that we could possibly need and he's deposited it within us. So why are we praying? For relationship. And as we seek him, not things, as we seek him, not answers, as we seek him, not problems, if whatever our focus on is what we receive. So if we want to receive all that he is and all that he has, like the verse that we looked at a few days ago in the amazing morning, it's an amazing morning uh, sessions at 6 a.m. for those of you in Eastern time earlier for the rest of you. That's what the word says. That he, we, we receive all that he is and all that he has. Then are there any issues, any problems, any concerns? No, we have his wisdom. Why? Because we sought him. Is there any kind of lack? No. 
Because he's an abundant God. He's a he's bigger. When we seek him, we receive him and all that he is. And that's what we really need. Far too often we get our eyes off on things that are minor, things that are lesser, things that are easily answered with more of God. What to do about this relationship? What you really need is more of Him. And then He'll be the answer through you. What? Are you in class? Yep. I mean, are you in root class? There's people logged in there. I, I'm on all of... Excuse us. <laughs> I'm on all of the Facebook and YouTube's Rumble is having an issue, I think, other than... Oh, no. Hold on one moment. So it's all about relationship. That's what God is looking for. He... Hang on. I, we have people over, and so I jumped into classes, and then I missed jumping in one area. So I'm quickly jumping in, even though I feel like I just shorted them. Good thing God had me record at the beginning, because now I can upload all of the actual class to them. Rachel, Casey, I apologize. I rushed in here and uh, got everything set up, I thought, and then, uh, yeah, it didn't go live for you guys. Oh, hang on. <coughs> Sorry. Yep, yep, I can hear you. All right, do I have a crazy echo, or is it not too bad? Okay. I'm still figuring out. Some year I'm going to have a sound person come over and help us set this up right. That'd be amazing. So, to recap, for those of you watching on social media, you'll need this. For those of you on rootbible.com, I don't know how I forgot our own web... It's not even that I forgot. I... You think you're live everywhere, and then it just doesn't go, and I didn't notice with my time frame. So I was like, oh, I got to go. So anyway, so to recap, we're talking about this. We're talking about a sticky question about prayer. If God is all-powerful, if God is all-knowing, if God is sovereign, why does he ask us to pray? And, and people fall into two ditches on this. One, God is all-powerful. God is sovereign. God is, um, which one? He knows all things. He's God is omni, well, omnipresent, but omniscient is the other word. So he's going to do what he's going to do when he wants to do it. And then we have to figure out the rest on our own. That's one ditch that a lot of people fall into, and it's not right. Another, another ditch is that God is all-powerful, God is sovereign, God is all-knowing, and because he's asked us to pray and given us verses like, um, hang on, I just I used one earlier, and I got to see if I can pull it up. Anyway, you know the... the where he asks us to, verses where he asks us to pray, they're like, okay, so God is actually more like a genie in a bottle. I, I have a need, I have a want, I just put it out there, and God's all-powerful. I don't have to doubt or wonder if he's going to answer me. I know that I'll get it, and so I love having this all-powerful, all-knowing, uh, always-present God so I can just list off my, my demands, my needs, my wishes, my wants, and he has to do it because God's all-powerful. That's also not really prayer. 
being trying to be in a bully. So, what is it really that he's after? How, why would he invite us to pray if he's all powerful? If he's all knowing? The Bible even says that that uh, he knows the things that we need even before we ask him. So why pray? Because it's all about relationship. That's what it's about. It's not like God is our genie in a bottle. He's a subservient to us, just stuck up in heaven waiting for us to pray. And he's like, oh man, I really wish I could be an answer in the, on the earth, but no one's asked me for this, so I, I'm stuck. I just, I'm just waiting on the people. No, that's not it. And it's not that he's aloof. The, the answer is, or answer is partially found in Hebrews 11, 6. And without faith it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. It's about seeking him. Not the things, not the desires, not the wants, not the needs, not the lacks. God, I have this lack. God, let me just tell you all about my lack because my lack is so big. And, I, and you get, I've prayed prayers like this. this is, I'll tell you my experience. I've prayed prayers like that, begging God, glorifying the problem. Oh, God, this problem's so big. I don't know what to do. I'm so really stuck here, and I'm just freaking out. It's just impossible. I don't even know what's going to happen. I don't even know how to get out of this. I've prayed, prayed prayers like that. And you know what I got? I didn't get a reward. Because you know what I wasn't doing? Seeking him. I wasn't. I was seeking answers. I was seeking um, provision. I was seeking wisdom. I was seeking all the other things that come automatically when you spend time with him. But when you seek him, you receive him. You have him uh, on unveiled within you like Moses when he talked with God they actually asked him to put a veil over his face because he was beginning to shine he was beginning to glow like God God who is light then had someone hang with him develop that relationship to the point where he began to look just like God even in the natural that's how it is supposed to be for us. Not that we have to have glowing faces. We don't need to freak people out unless God decides that that's something you need to have. Then he'll lead you to pray for it and ask for it and seek him. And uh, he might do that. I don't think Moses was seeking, God, I really need a glowing face so that they can know that I'm like the leader and that we're like connected and stuff. So like, could you give me like a glowing face or maybe like lightning fingers? One of the two would be awesome. No, it, I don't see that. I don't see that in the Word. What happened? He hung out with God and then became more like God in all things. So where we didn't have wisdom before, now we're hanging out with God and now we have wisdom. Where we didn't have provision before, now we're hanging out with God and we have provision. We didn't have whatever it is. And then we hang out. We develop that relationship with God. We seek Him, and He becomes the answer that we need. He fills in our weakness. No matter what area it is, no matter what it is, God becomes the answer when we don't seek Him with our eyes on the problem, but we just seek him for who he is. And that's why we pray. We don't pray because we're hoping the sovereign God, we can kind of twist his arm with enough scriptures and force him into something. 
It's not like we we pray just because he's asked us to, but we know that it's pointless because God's going to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. I've known pastors preach things like that. I've had conversations with pastors. Yeah, you know, God just does what he wants to do. He heals who he wants to heal and kills who he wants to kill. And just, you know, he does what his thing. And we just try to keep our head down and do good things. And hopefully he doesn't notice us either way, good or bad. I don't want to become a target for anybody. It's crazy. No, so why do we pray? Because God loves us. He's loved us before we were even around, before we would even been born. He had mapped out every day for us. And you know what those days connect or are connected to? Him every single day. This is who I want to be through them this day. And this is who I want to be through them on this day. And on this day, I want to be th this through them. And it's going to be, it's going to blow their socks off because they haven't experienced me in this way yet. This is going to be amazing. That's what it is. It's not a list of requirements that he knows we're going to fall short of and, and fail epically every single day in front of him. No. He's looking for us to seek him, to develop that relationship so that he can become all that's needed, not just by us, but by those around us as well. We have conversations with people almost every day where they need something. They need wisdom. They need help. They need provision. They need you fill in the blank. God wants to be their answer through you. And you know how that happens? By not seeking him for the answer. That sounds silly. But that's really how it works. God, you know what I need. You know what this person needs. But right now, I'm just going to hang out with you. I'm going to invite them to hang out with you as well right now. I, I'm telling you, next time somebody comes to you with a need, do this and you'll be amazed at how God becomes the answer in them. It doesn't even take you. This is what I do. Honestly, this is what I do. Oh, man. That sounds epically bad if it wasn't for our relationship with God. I wouldn't know what to do either if it wasn't for God. They're like, well, what's God saying? Let's find out. God, we just love you. Oh, I thank you, God, that you are so big and you're so powerful. Here, join, me, join with me in prayer. We're just going to talk to God about how awesome he is and hang out with him a little bit. And so we do that. God, what, what do you want to say to us? What do you want us? What do you want to say? How do you want us to lead like you, live like you? Okay, what'd you hear? You ask them, 90% of the time, they already have the answer. You don't have to have the answer. All you have to do is lead them to seek him. And when you seek him, you'll find him. And when you find him, you'll find that he is the answer that you need in all things. And you can just be that catalyst for your families, for your friends for your small groups, for your churches. They don't need somebody else to be the answer man for them. They don't need us to be the Holy Spirit for them. Oh, I, I know I just got I, I to go to Rachel because I know Rachel can hear God, and I know I can't, so I just got to ask Rachel. Rachel, what's God saying about this area? I, I, I've been in churches like that. Oh, oh if, you need, if you need an answer, don't, don't pray about it. No, 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 go to, you got to go to Cindy. Cindy always hears God's voice. So just go to Cindy. And so uh, that's so much easier. Just ask Cindy to pray and pr Cindy will give you the answer. And then, then you just do what Cindy says because we need to seek Cindy. Where's Cindy at? Oh, no, Cindy's not here. Ah! Oh, no, where's Cindy? I'm freaking out. I've been in churches like that. I've been in small groups like that. The, the one person, they're the one that hears from God. 
We all can hear from God. It happens when we seek Him. When we stop long enough to get our eyes off of ourselves, our eyes off of our problems, our eyes off of the needs, our eyes off of anything else except Him. I don't get God's answer, His, his mighty provision, His supernatural um, response when I stare at the wind and waves. It's when I go to Him. I can walk on water. It's when I keep my eyes on Him that the supernatural, impossible things happen. And if you realize, you know what? I've just been going, I've been wind and waves praying the entire time. That's okay. Peter got his eyes off of God and went to the wind and waves too. But what did he do? He put his eyes back on God back on Jesus. Jesus, help me. Just like that. He's there, lifts them up, gets them back to the boat as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus. That's where the answers come from. All right. I'm cutting myself off there. Social media people, I'm telling you, reminding you one last time, if you have not signed up for an account for free on rootbible.com, do it tonight because I'm sending out an email with um, the things that we have learned about how to have a thriving relationship with God that goes out tomorrow and it only goes out to those that have are, are on our mailing list. So go check that out, sign up, and uh, I see Rachel doing the happy dance. She gets those. Casey and Cindy, they're on there, so they don't have to worry. They're just they're just gleaming. Yeah. So for the rest of you, this is the last warning. I'm not going to tell you again. And you can also sign up for the prayer school where you can join us live. They can see me. I can see them. And now I'm switching over to just chatting with them to uh, take it a little deeper, go a little farther. And it's always good. I'm telling you, these classes are good, but when I switch over, I don't know. Something special happens every time. It feels like to me. Rachel's rolling her eyes at that, but you know, what? whatever. So I'm just kidding. She's not. <laughs> all right, social media friends, I'm leading you go. I'll see you all next week. Bye. All right. There we go. I don't have any fancy music or anything set up. I literally ran in here super late, jumped on everything I thought, and just went to town. And then Kate came in. She's like, are you on route? I'm like, yeah, I'm teaching to my route. I'm teaching everywhere. She's like, I don't think it's working. And so I apologize. I recorded the whole thing, so I'll put the whole class up on uh, root um, after this so that you can watch the beginning part but I tried to summarize it pretty quick but it's just a fun reminder I think if, if we really thought it through we know prayers about intimacy it's about connection with God but far too often people swing into one of those ditches I'm going to pray, but it doesn't mean much because God's sovereign, God's all-powerful, and he's just going to do what he wants. Or I, I need to pray because he's, I'm the master and he's subservient to me, so I'm going to throw up my wishes and see which one he's going to grant. And that's not how it goes. It's not how it works. But when we seek him with all of our heart, when we diligently seek him, then we find him, and that's all that we ever need. And that's all that our families ever need. He's the answer. He's the solution. So why would we seek after anything else? we got to get our eyes off, like it says in Colossians chapter 1, uh, or sorry, ch chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. We need to set our heart on things above. Why don't we just look it up? Hang on. Let me pull it up quick. Mm. 
Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. We're going for the Billy Graham Training Center Bible. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 1, 2, and 3. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. What does that mean? There's nothing in this world that's worth seeking after, seeking him after even. Then, well, after you've set your heart on him, what do you do next? Set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. Stop meditating on the problems. Stop meditating on the issues. Stop meditating on the questions, on the what ifs. Those are all irrelevant. It's a waste of time for a Christian. For those who don't have God, then yes, they do need to think things through, talk things through. We've got to really focus on this. We really got to dive into this because you know we've got to figure out an acceptable answer. With us, it's not. We set our mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Verse 3, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. He's the answer. Everything you need is in Christ. It's in seeking Him. It's in seeking Him only. And then He becomes the answer that you need. And then verse 4. I, I know I just mentioned this in the morning thing, but I had to bring it up again. When Christ, our life, appears then you also will appear with him in glory. What's that talking about? It's not talking about heaven. It's talking about when we seek him, we set our mind on things above, guess what? God dwells in the praises of his people. Boom. He's there. Not just there. He appears and he, like other versions say, he's revealed. God is revealed in that moment. And then when he's revealed in glory, we also appear with him in glory. He becomes the glory. He becomes the answer to the point where people marvel. How did you do? How did you know that? How did you have that answer? How did you do that? How did you? Whatever. He's being glorified. And you're being glorified at the same time. Not that the, your glory is to be all about you, but another opportunity to reflect him. And what? why? Why? So that they will seek him. So it all comes back to seeking him. So I'm cutting myself off. Questions, comments. Uh, Casey, I saw you unmute first, so go for it. But really, it's just about the relationship. And once that was there, I, all that stuff kind of felt like I didn't even need to talk about it. I needed to talk about other things that were in the present. And, you know, not dwelling, just, just being in the presence of God. And really just, like you said, the, it's all about the relationship. It, he becomes the answer. Like, you don't even need to do anything. It's just that seeking, instead of complaining about something or, or doing something to, for a purpose and saying how bad things are. It just, it's not the same as just seeking, like you said. So that, that really hit home with me. So. Good. Yeah. It's so simple. He makes things so simple. We muck it up. We make it complex. Oh God, I know you're the answer, but what about this? And what about that? No, he's still the answer. We just got to let go, let him be who he says he is and get ourselves and our minds out of the way. Who was I just listening to? Our, I, was, I think it was David Prince said that uh, 
your mind was built to help you choose God. It was never built to be in control, to be in the lead. And so when you try to be in the lead, that's where you get the downward spirals of the what ifs, endless what ifs, the I can't really sleep because I've got all these questions going on, all those things. It's a signal that you've allowed your mind to take, be in the lead of who you're going to be. And if you can figure things out, if it makes sense to you, then you'll do it. He's like, that's letting your mind lead instead of living in peace, letting Christ lead. And so, anyway, that's a, that's a side note. But that's, yeah, that's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Rachel? Rachel? Lord had given me a vision earlier at Ladies Bible Study, and it was just—it was really cute and sweet. And I'm going to share it with your kids tomorrow when I see them. But it's um, they're like you know that game Duck Duck Goose, where you run around the circle and you get duck duck, you tap each head and duck duck duck, and you try to pick which one you're going to hit say goose to, and then they chase you around the circle. Well, in the spirit, I saw. Jesus walking around, you know, everybody's sitting down and he's walking around and he's touching each head. And then he gets in the center and he goes, Goose. And it's like, everybody oh, that's cool. is my goose. Come to me because I am no respecter of persons. This word is for everyone. This, you know, I am for everyone. You know, seek me out. You know, I want intimacy with all of you, not just with one person. And, you know, the, everybody can share in this and to understand our identity in him we have to do these things we have to you know seek his face and not his hand all the time um but it's hard when you have like you want answers and it's like how do you it's a, it's hard to balance it because you you know you're you're here and he's you know everywhere but you know what I'm saying? Like you're in the middle of a of something and you're like, I, Lord, I really need to hear this. And you don't want to always come to him and be that person. Like, I need answers for this. I need answers for this. <laughs> it seems like it's all the time. Yeah. So what do you do then? You set your mind on him. Set your heart on him. Just like you're talking about. I've been in the place where I'm like, gone. I need finances by Friday. I need this relationship thing figured out like ASAP because it's downward spiraling. I need this issue solved. I have no idea what to do in this area. I'm not sure what to do about the, our housing situation and Kate's really on me to figure this thing out. I don't, uh, there's so many things got, I have no idea. What did I have to do? Drop all that and hang out with him. And as I did, he's like, hey, Call this person. What? Why? Oh, okay, whatever. And I call that person, and then do, 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 things. I'm like, what? That was so easy. That was so simple. All right, I guess I didn't have to. But what about this? No, no. God, I just seek you. You're amazing. I love you. I want to develop our relationship so that I can know you even more and so that I can release you in all things. So this world can really see you as you are in every area of my life. Not so that I can have the answers that I need, but so that you can be glorified in everything that I do, in every area of my life. That it's not just better than it, it was. And that it's not just tolerable, but it is full of you, overabundantly you. God, I just love you. And I, I want to see you be glorified that way. I want to see you. I want to see you be um, so exalted in this world that other people marvel at how good you are so that they can seek you for who you are too. And as you seek him and just love on him, answers come. I had a, a friend of mine this last week. Um, he was at work. And we've been having um, some good conversations, which is pretty fun, about God and talking, listening to some teaching sometimes and whatever. 
and uh, I wasn't with this person um, when it happened. I'd left early that day uh, to get some other things done. And he normally leaves work at 3.30, and so he knows exactly this is how I am, this is where I am, at usually every time of the afternoon from that point on because traffic's pretty consistent. And he's like, I just felt like, you know what, I, I, need to, I need to get this thing done at work. And so he talked to the other people, like, no, nope, we can't leave, we just got to get this thing done. And he didn't know why. And uh, then they wrapped that up, took about 30 extra minutes and everybody left to get on the freeway down in Naples and uh, and a biker pulls up next to him you guys aren't all headed north on 75 are you or you're not all well, I forget which way whatever you're not all getting on 75 I 75 are you they're like yeah they're like well like 30 minutes ago a plane just crashed on the interstate you guys, you can't go there. It would, it's not going to work. You won't be able to travel. And they came to realize they'd stayed at work an extra 30 minutes because the one guy just had that knowing. And then found out that's exactly where they would have been in the middle of all of that craziness. I'm not saying I know from a word of God, a word of knowledge, that the plane would have landed on them, but it would have been pretty close. And instead of being stuck in endless gridlock on the freeway because you're not going anywhere with a plane sitting there, they got to skirt around it and head on home. And they all had to go that same direction. That's what happens when you seek after God. He helps you steer around problems, irritations that you don't even know exist before they happen. And he becomes the answer that you need in the things you're currently going through. And as you seek him, then you have less things that you're currently going through because you're seeking him and he's leading you and guiding you around all of those other things. I, I have it. I, I used to love to spend any extra money that we had on going out to eat because that was so fun as a family to have that family time. So we'd get a little bit of extra money. And I'm like, we're going to Culver's. We're going to whatever, you know. And uh, then got, then I'd get in a pickle. I'm like, oh, no, we have no finances to do this thing. I didn't know this bill hadn't been paid already. I thought it had. Or, whoa, no, the annual bill of this came out. What the, whoa, that throws me way off. Blah, 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 blah. And then God's, I started asking him, all right, God, we're doing life together. We got a little bit extra. Should we go do this? And he's like, no. I'm like, oh, are you sure about that? No. All right, we're not doing that. Oh, okay. And sometimes I'd even had opened my big mouth and said, we're going to do this really fun thing. And then Kate's like, are you sure God's saying that? I'm like, oh, you're, you're right. God, are we supposed to all go do this really fun thing? It's going to be amazing. And he's like, no. You're like, oh. But then you know what started to happen? We had a whole lot less financial emergencies. Because now... He knows what's coming up. Oh, no, this bad thing happened. Oh, I guess it's not really that bad. We actually have extra in the account for that. Oh, surprising how that works. So I'm telling you, in all things, little things, big things, God, I just really am craving a $5 coffee. Do I get a $5 coffee? If he says yes, do it. Do it in full of faith. If he says no, don't do it. Don't do it full of faith. Seek him, and you'll find him, and he'll guide you into a life that's better than you know. All right, I said I was cutting myself off, and then you guys got me going again. All right, any other questions, comments, accusations of long-windedness? No, that one's definitely true. I would accuse myself of that. All right. Let's pray. God? We love you. We love that we can know you. You're just so cool. That the God of the entire universe has opened up the way that we couldn't, we don't even just have to like settle for being your servants, which in itself would be amazing. 
Because if if the Queen of Persia marveled at Solomon's servants, how much more would the leadership of this world marvel as we would step into that kind of a position, a servant position with you, and really let you be the master? But you went beyond that. You haven't just called us servant. You called us children of God. Or like even what Jesus said, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. God, that's so ridiculous. You're so good. And we just love you. Teach us how to seek you in every area of our life. Teach us how to release you in every area of our life. Teach us to expect you to be who you are in every area of our life so that we can see you be the answer for everything. So that we can glorify you. So that others can see your goodness and that your kindness will lead them to repentance. You're so awesome. We just love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, that feels good. Anybody else? I'm just like super saturated with the presence of God right now. I'm like, oh, he shows up. You start loving on him. He's like, oh, I like that. Uh, tell me more. Tell me more. A little bit more. Yeah, that's good. Mm, mm, I like that. He made us in our image. So, you know, anyway, I'm just going to go enjoy this presence. I'm going to go have some fun. You guys have a good night, and I'll see you all next week. I love this. All right. Bye, everybody.